Did you know trans women can get their period just like cis women? Wow, just like females. No, wow, I, wow, no, 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 I actually, I didn't know that. that, that's interesting, wow. We don't bleed or anything and there's no shedding of uterine lining. Oh, oh, I, I thought, I thought you were saying, I, I thought you were saying just, just like cis women. Oh no, but they don't. Oh, okay. Having a little bit of a tough time following. No big deal. Let's keep going. But thanks to the miracle of hormone replacement therapy, it now feels like someone has put a belt around my intestines and is tightening them and tightening them and tightening them. And eventually I'm going to explode. So what, what you're describing uh, actually sounds a little bit more like diarrhea. Yeah, no, no, honey, it, that doesn't, that actually doesn't sound like a period. And that's okay, no, 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 I know, because you've never had one, of course you don't know, sweetheart, you poor thing. No, it, it actually sounds a little bit more like, like, like you're having explosive diarrhea. That's, no, honey, that's not a menstrual cycle. Oh, oh you poor, you poor dear. Oh, no, that, that's gas. Do you need, do you need some Imodium? Do, do I know, I, I, I can run right now. I'll, I'll go over to CVS, I'll get you some Imodium. Do you, would, would that help, honey? We. My mom know I'm a demon. It ain't nothing she could do but pray for me. Why do cis women insist on gatekeeping periods? Why does it bother you so much as a cis woman if a trans woman says, I identify with some of the experiences of going through a period, a menstrual cycle, a hormonal imbalance once a month? I struggle to express just how much this particular TikToker annoys me. Because they do, trans women who are on hormone replacements will experience a monthly cycle of hormones. They have all the symptoms of PMS. So on April 7th of 2021, I was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma and I had a trans pelvic external beam therapy. I had 25 rounds of about, I think like 50 gray. It was a high enough dosage that would guarantee to destroy my hormonal functioning and destroy any ovarian functioning. So I had to fight. I had to fight my 60, my, my OBGYN who was in her 60s who did not offer me this procedure. But thank God to social media, somebody told me about a ovarian transpositioning surgery where basically it was a laparoscopic procedure where they would go in through my belly button and a few other points on my abdo uh, abdomen and they would basically remove my fallopian tubes and throw them out because there's no use for them anymore, move my ovaries up into my abdominal cavity further up higher, but it would keep the same blood source. So they're and that would continue to supply it with blood. And, and you know, I, the idea is to pull it out of the range of, uh, sorry, I got cut off, but the point was to move my ovaries out of the field of radiation to prevent me being thrown into premature menopause at the age of 33. It was to prevent my ovaries from being sp exposed to too much radiation and being damaged to the point where they can no longer function and I can no longer have natural hormonal production of estrogen and all my other sex hormones. I was told, oh, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal if you go into menopause. And no, and I fought, and I had to fight, fought, fought, and finally they approved me for the surgery. I moved my ovaries out of the field of radiation, and unfortunately, it was not successful. So at age 33, I was thrown into iatrogenic premature menopause in which my ovaries ceased to function. And I'm now wholly reliant on exogenous estrogen, which means external estrogen and synthetic estrogen and not my own body making it. So prior to my cancer-induced iatrogenic premature menopause, I was menstruating normally. I had pretty typical 28-day cycles. I had pretty serious PMS that I would say bordered on PMDD, but really intense cramps that were sometimes nearly debilitating. 
and I was really in touch with my body so I knew how to read my mucus I knew when my fertility window had started I knew when it had closed I knew when my period was coming I knew when my pH balance was off I paid attention to my body closely and I supported a lot of other women doing the same a lot of natural fertility cycling and observation uh, I could feel in my breasts when there were hormonal changes happening throughout my my cycle what I can tell you is that since I have been in menopause since I have been taking exogenous hormones that are a standard dose which means I am not experiencing the fluctuations okay I have not that I've been on exogenous hormones I have never once experienced anything even remotely similar to PMS. I have never had a single cramp, which again, are uterine contractions. The uterus is smooth muscle. I guess the argument is that because there are smooth muscles in the abdomen and in the colon, that that's the same thing. Uh, soft muscle contra contractions uh, do happen in our intestines once we are very deep into our hormone regimens. So that has happened to a number of trans women. That is definitionally not what menstruation entails. Nor is that anything within the stratosphere of experiencing a period. No. My God, no. So why am I not having cramps? Hmm? Why am I not having period symptoms? I still have a uterus, okay? I still have a cervix and I still have a vagina. I even still have my ovaries even though they're not functioning. Why, why am I not experiencing the, these trans periods? The word period it has nothing to do with blood either. It, it means a cycle of time and in the 15th century they used the word period to describe reoccurrence of a disease i'm pretty sure in the 15th century those male doctors thought a menstrual cycle was a fucking disease you literally just qualified your assertion that trans women get periods by defining periods as a disease and then backtracked and then tried to clown that idea as like a male thing so so which is it? is it that we are all experiencing the recurrence of a disease? Or, or is that some weird patriarchal, misogynistic, disgusting, dehumanizing way to characterize a menstrual cycle? I, I, I'm, really, I'm really genuinely trying to follow along. I'm doing my best, I'm doing my best. But you contradict yourself so frequently, it is very tough to keep up. But to think that a trans woman wouldn't understand the shame and stigma of a bodily function that we go through as a woman and can't identify with that is ludicrous. There are plenty of seats at the table. Stop gatekeeping. Okay, trans women are not dealing with PMS or PMDD, which can alter our behavior, impact our relationships, impact our ability to work, impact our ability to, to socialize, to get along. As um, I am a former home birth midwife, a home birth midwife assistant, I am a New York Department of Health certified breastfeeding educator and I am a New York Department of Health certified educator of breastfeeding educators. So I would train other breastfeeding educators. I am a still birthday and her side trained bereavement doula. I am a donor certified childbirth doula. I'm a Lamaze certified childbirth educator. Um, I am a placenta encapsulator and I'm a birth photographer. I have worked with literally hundreds of females, hundreds of pregnant and birthing women and pregnant and birthing families. And, and I've dealt with so many couples throughout my career. I was one of 16 women awarded a community doula fellowship where I received extensive training and workshops and certifications to work with at-risk women. I worked with refugees. I worked with teen mothers. I worked with Spanish-speaking women, women, uh, domestic abuse survivors who were all in pregnancy. And I offered them uh, education, pregnancy, prenatal support, a full spectrum perinatal doula care, including labor support and neo postpartum support. So I, let me tell you that something that trans women don't deal with when it comes to periods, okay? I've supported women whose husbands 
literally told them that they are entitled to have access to other women while their wife was menstruating because they would not have sex with them on their period, that their wife was dirty and disgusting. I have listened to women cry as they recount the fact that their boyfriends said that they will not have sex with them on their period and they're getting their period too often and they need to do something about it. I've had women take hormones and birth control and other solutions to suppress their period and suppress their menstrual cycle so that their boyfriend can have sex with them more often without having to get dirty and disgusting because they wouldn't touch them while they were menstruating. These are things that females deal with, that males will never, the no amount of role playing, the no amount of wanting or wishing or feeling or identifying will ever put them in the path of experiencing gatekeeping. Why do cis women insist on gatekeeping periods? You actually accused us of being jealous? cis women being so mad about the fact that trans women have periods so thank you so much for asking that question please go follow them right now i'm going to share my theory but i'm sure there's so many others so comment your thoughts below why are cis women so mad about this i feel as though those types of cis women are envious of trans women because the femininity that trans women express can't fall into the version that was created by the patriarchy it's impossible because the version of femininity created by patriarchy is inherently transphobic and misogynistic no it's because you people have the memory of goldfish. And up until fairly recently, women were being treated as though they were males. All medical development testing protocols were developed for male-bodied people, not females. We were given treatments that were unsuitable for us. We were forced to deal with conditions related to our biology that had no solution for because they were not developing treatments for females. We dealt with menstrual issues for a long time. I dealt with so many women who were suffering from severe iron deficiency because of them losing blood to the point that they were passing out, losing consciousness while they were driving. I had one woman who got in a car accident because she got dizzy and lightheaded and fainted while she was driving because she had low iron from menstrual, heavy menstrual bleeding and blood. I dealt with so many women with severe bleeding every single month. Okay, females die from toxic shock syndrome. Women die in menstrual huts where they are quarantined during their bleeding because they are seen as dirty and disgusting and evil, unholy. Women have died. Women who have been genitally mutilated through FGM practices throughout the world, who have had their vaginas sewn shut, have died from menstruating. Okay, women have died from blood loss, from iron deficiency. Women have lost their jobs. Okay, there, there's always been this sort of tongue-in-cheek joke that, oh, you know, males really are the perfect women because they know exactly what other males want sexually and they don't have any of the same problems that come with them, you know, getting, getting their periods and all this other disgusting female stuff. You're right. Males are the perfect female for, for men. They don't get pregnant. They don't have the hormonal mood swings. We don't, they're not uh, evolutionarily wired to demand commitment before they have sex. They don't gatekeep their sexuality or their bodies the way that females do and the way that females have evolved to because we must protect our fertility. You're right. You're right. Males have higher sex drives. You're right. But we still are something unique. We have a right to say that this is our experience. You endanger us. When you try to neutralize medical terms, when now trans rights activism have bullied 
all of our previously most trusted institutions into submission. And now even the American Medical Association, World Health Organization are recognized, Amnesty International are recognizing trans women as women. It is only a matter of time before it is seen as transphobic to have female-centric treatments and research criteria and medical developments. Trans women will find a way to insert themselves. We'll have to include them. And obviously we cannot have accurate findings, accurate medical developments for females. I remember one time I was read, you know, uh, we were having this conversation and there was somebody, there was some white woman who was complaining. There was some white people or per, I don't know, white guy who was complaining about using the N word and oh, well, you know, uh, why do black people get to say it? And if, you know, if we can't say it, then they shouldn't be able to say it. And it's not fair. You know, why is it when I say it, everyone, you know, shits their pants. But if a, a black guy says the N word, it's totally okay. You know what the response to that is? Because black people paid for the N word in blood. Black families were destroyed. Black children were slaughtered. Black women were raped. Black men were executed in the name of the N-word. They were dehumanized by the N-word. So now, as they seek liberation, Black Americans and Black people across the world, but particularly Black Americans who inherited the legacy of slavery, American slavery, they have paid for the N-word in blood. They will now use it as they see fit. They can discard it if they please. They can repurpose it if they please. They can use it however the hell they want and you will say nothing. Women have paid for the word woman in blood. We have died because of our femaleness. We have been mutilated because of our femaleness. We have been enslaved due to our femaleness. We have been trafficked, beaten, disrespected, and destroyed because of our femaleness. We paid for the woman, word woman in blood. It's ours. You're not gonna take that women suffer because of this, these, this mythology, this misogyny. You're saying we're jealous? <laughs> and by the way, um, I have a question, and don't fight me, because I know how you girls like to tussle. Those cis women probably feel trapped in that version of femininity, because it's so rigid. And it's like, if you want to break free from that version of femininity, just do it. Easier said than done, sure. But like, trying to bully trans women into thinking that they're not as much of a woman as you isn't going to help you. That's just my theory. What do you think? Okay, so saying that what, what, we're stuck practicing femininity? No. Males who identify as trails are the epitome of the patriarchy. They are embody everything that is performative. To make you seem funnier, to make you seem cooler. Maybe I just am funnier and cooler. About being feminine while possessing nothing about being female. Being female is what makes me a woman. My intelligence, my spirit, my love, my personality, my wisdom, my experience. This is what makes me a human being. Okay, it is not misogynist to say that it is my biology that designates me as a woman. And no, and, and, and stop it. Stop with the gaslighting on behalf of these trans. Stop with the gaslighting and say, oh, look, because I don't have a uterus, does that mean I'm less of a woman? Nobody said that women without uteruses aren't women. That's insane. Never once. I, why, I'm in menopause right now, which is a female condition.
a female condition. Okay, having a hysterectomy, you should understand, is a female procedure. It's something that happens to females. And I know that you understand the exogenous hormones that I take to treat my hot flashes and some of the symptoms of menopause does not return me to being premenopausal. I am still in menopause. I am still a woman. Being in menopause is a female experience. A hysterectomy is a female experience. Being born without ovaries as a woman is still a female experience. Stop gaslighting. Stop supporting this shit.